Hello everyone. Well, I've got another Miele vacuum cleaner to unbox today. This is a Miele Complete C2 power line, cat and dog. The only reason I bought this, it was on um, Amazon offer. They had a Prime Day recently, at the time of making this video, and this was for Prime members only at an exclusive price of £122 and a few pence. So £122 for Mila Cat and Dog, I couldn't pass that up. And also, I wanted to get it because this is a model that won't be available for much longer, certainly in the UK and uh, any European country. This is a 1200 watt vacuum cleaner. As of September 2017, the maximum wattage allowed for new vacuum cleaners sold in the EU will be 900 watts. Now, as the UK have left the EU, we're still in it though, and we're still going to be in it in September. So um, we will be having the 900 watt cap on the vacuum cleaners. So I suggest before some unscrupulous retailers and sellers try and sell you the new or the old newer lower wattage cleaners before they're replaced with even lower wattage ones, well buy one now. I would suggest. So this is, I think this is one of the Chinese assembled mealers, um, but it is assembled from German made components as far as I have been told. Some of the entry level mealer vacuum cleaners are assembled in China now and they tend to be the ones with the older body styles. This is uh, based on, I think they used to call it an S5. I have done quite a while ago on my channel a video of a Miele Revolution with the power head. Now that is definitely a German model. And it's the same body shape as this. Right, let's have a look at the tools. So, we get the hose. Ah, oh, that's new. That's a new design. New to me anyway, since I last uh, unboxed Amila, they've changed the design of the handle. They've given it a slightly textured panel. Not sure if we can quite pick that up on camera. Also got this metal strip that's featured on many, well most Amila suction cleaners. This is to prevent any static shocks as long as your hand is in contact with that metal strip when you're vacuuming. Any static charge that can build up when you're vacuuming some man-made carpets should be dispersed. You're not going to suddenly, if you touch the metal tube, and it's going to suddenly get a little bit of a, a static shock. As long as you, as I say, keep in contact with that little metal strip. Yeah, I like that new design. It's got uh, a newly designed suction relief valve as well. So that's good. And that clips on to this end of the hose. Push that in, it's a nice tight seal and that collar fits and of course it swivels at the uh, handle end, it'll also swivel at the end it goes into the vacuum. So that's, you know, good quality Miele hose, telescopic metal extension tube, nice smooth action, locks into many different positions. This is the Alltech cleaning head. It probably have a plastic base plate. Most of them do now. Yes, they've gone to what Mila call the fiber tech base plate. It's basically the same as the other Mila nozzle, but they've just replaced the metal base with this plastic. Now you've got your litter pickers, got your foot operated um, brush. So press down there, which lowers the brush for carpets, sorry for hard floors, you want it up for carpets, down for hard floors. And you've got Miele's click, click fitting system where everything clicks together. Well, the main tools do, the smaller tools, they don't um, 
they just the friction fit but on the main tools it's a nice click like that so it stays on securely until you press the button and release and finally the other main tool because this is the cat and dog version and where's my um, my little box opener so I mean I thought 122 pounds is a, a good price you'll have to con if you want to convert that to dollars just google it I'm not sure at the time of making the video what the conversion rate is you might be talking about 150 160 dollars that sort of price for a Miele vacuum it's not obviously it's not a powerhead vacuum this is a decent um, turbo nozzle I'm just seeing I'm pretty sure this will be made in Germany actually doesn't can't see where it says it doesn't actually say but to buy this on its own can cost up to 60 pounds to buy that as an accessory so 122 for the whole machine I think it's a, a good deal you've got a little suction release here which is uh, when you use this on rugs and more uh, deep pile carpets high pile because it stops the brush from slowing down too much it still allows the air to flow through to keep the turbine spinning and of course the brush rotating but for normal carpets, um, carpet tiles, short pile, you'd have it closed. You've got squeegee. So there's the brush. Rotates at a high speed. And it does move up and down. So it will uh, cater for different carpet heights. And to, to gain access, you can use a coin. Undo these two screws here. This base plate comes off and you have a little bit more access. Should you need to clean the brush or remove a blockage? And you've, of course, you've got the click fit system as well as the parking bracket on the back. So that's all the tools, apart from the ones that are, of course, stored on board. You do get a separate instruction book for the turbo nozzle as well as the instruction book for the machine itself. Let's check on the energy label. So, because it's a fairly high wattage, it gets a D rating for energy use. It uh, uses on average 45.9 kilowatt hours per annum. Gets a B rating for dust emissions from the exhaust, a C for dust pickup for carpets, a B for dust pickup from a hard floor. And it's 76 decibels, so it's not noisy, but it's not the quietest mealer. Um, says on here, it says 1100 watts on here, we'll see what it says on the actual machine. But as I say, September 2017, more regulations are coming out regarding vacuum cleaners. And uh, apart from lowering the wattage again to 900 watts, there will be a maximum allowable noise level for vacuum cleaners will be 80 decibels. I've already seen some of the newer machines coming into the shops or into catalogues. And a lot of the cheaper newer machines are peaking at about 79 decibels, so they've just got under the regulations. But I think some more expensive machines will go further, a lot further, and reduce the noise level. Also, the motors in vacuum cleaners will have to have a minimum uh, run life. I can't remember what it is, but it, th those two things, reducing the noise and making sure that the motors will last a minimum time, is a good thing. In fact, really, it was a good thing the, um, the first time the EU interfered, some people think, with vacuum cleaners. The wattages were going up, up and up, and it was getting ridiculous. You were, there were some vacuums at 2,600 watts. You don't need that sort of wattage. And uh, most people would not have noticed if they bought a new vacuum cleaner. It will still clean probably as well as their high wattage machine. Right, that's the first time I've opened, I think, a Miele without having some damage to the polystyrene. So as I said, this is based on the S5 model, so it's a shape, a body shape that's uh, been around for quite a while. It still looks modern, it still looks stylish, and it still, still feels 
like a well-made machine. As I said, I have a feeling this is made in China, assembled in China. There's no difference in the feel of it to a German-made machine. In my experience, I've got a lot of Miele cleaners. Most of them are made in Germany. And it, it shakes. I've just heard a shake, which means this has got the charcoal filter in to reduce odours. Let's have a look at that filter. So there's this little strip, I think that's not been put in the right place. There's normally a strip on the filters that you need to remove. Mila call these a time strip filter. Not really sure how they work, I've never really uh, used one for long enough, but they are supposed to indicate via this sticker when to replace, but it is on average every year you really should replace. This is certainly not a washable filter. And as you can hear, it's got little grains of charcoal in it, which are designed to reduce the odours coming out of the machine. This is a final exhaust filter, so the air obviously passes through the bag first. That's your primary filter, and I believe there's seven, or it could be nine now. There's a lot of layers anyway of filtration in a Miele dust bag. There's also a motor protection filter. But finally, when the air exits the machine and into your room it goes through this which filters it even more and the carbon layer does reduce any odour that can build up after picking up pet hair etc if it's been in the bag for a while. That goes in there and it clicks into place so here's the bag the self seal when you open the bag door so you just pull them out I think this is a G, yeah, GN style bag so you need to look for the blue collar corresponds with the bag support inside the machine. Um, these are HY, HY or high clean bags. Not the hugest capacity, but in my experience, you can fill them very full until you know you can't get any more dirt in, and the suction does not deplete to any massive degree. You don't notice a huge difference, unlike the old days with the paper bags. Um, they used to clog up with fine dust pretty quickly and you had to replace them long before they were full. So there's the motor protection filter. Oops, that should click in. There we go. Pop the bag back. Until it clicks, you line up the arrows. Press it down until it clicks into place. Make sure it's tucked in and then you can close the bag door. All feels very nice and solid. And then we've got your tools here. Quite a small short crevice tool but you can buy optional tools for this Miele. You can get a standard sort of 30 centimeter, 12 inch crevice tool, about that long. And they also do a very long flexible crevice tool as well. You've got your furniture nozzle, curtains, upholstery, your stairs. And this seems to be, yes, it's the cheaper, I thought it might be. This is the cheaper version of the dusting brush. So it's got nylon bristles instead of the natural ones you get with the more expensive mealers. It's still exactly the same nozzle though, apart from the brush, and you can angle it different ways, all quite small, but they do the job. But as I say, you can go onto Miele's website and choose from any number of different accessories for Miele vacuums. So they're stored on board. You've also got a bag check indicator that turns orange as the bag fills. Not always very accurate though, so it's always best from time to time just to open up the bag door and examine the bag yourself. So here are the controls on the cleaner. This is the exhaust vent at the top. You've got your central dial to adjust the suction from minimum right up to maximum and anything in between. So minimum is for delicate items such as your curtains. Turn it up slightly and you've got suction power suitable for cleaning most upholstered furniture. One more up on the dial is for your loose rugs. Uh, lightweight carpets. And then you've got the silent setting which combines a quieter noise level and for general cleaning of normally soiled carpets and hard floors. For fitted carpets 
you've got that setting. And for full power and for intensive cleaning of your carpets, you can switch to maximum. That's also, of course, the setting you'd use for your hard floors. Also on the back of the machine, you've got a foot operated on off switch and a foot operated automatic cord rewind. You've also got your parking slot at the back so you can park your main accessory, whether it be the Alltech nozzle or the turbo nozzle. You can park that on the back like that. So if you want to pause your vacuuming, you're not having to lay the nozzle on the floor and bend down to pick it up. You can just slot it into there and just pick it off when you need to carry on vacuuming. There's also two, I believe, yes, two brackets on the side to help with storage. So again, it slots into the side there. So you can store the machine with this attached. It's also useful for when you're carrying it up the stairs because it holds everything together. And on the underside, we've got your three swivel casters. Again, very quiet running, very smooth. And because it's got three, it means it will move left to right, back to front, in all directions, much more manoeuvrable than a vacuum cleaner that might have two fixed wheels at the back and just one caster. So if you want something that's much more manoeuvrable, then a machine with either three or four casters on the underside is what I would go for. It's, you can hear that sound. It's just a guide, but to me, when you're banging a vacuum and it sounds like that and it doesn't sound all hollow, it's a sign that it's been well made. It is a very well made vacuum. Let's have a quick look at the rating label. So here we go, it's a maximum 1200 watt motor and it actually does say made in China, engineered by Miele, made in CN, which uh, it's the first time I've actually seen them say made in China on a Miele. Normally if they're not made in Germany, they don't say anything. So yes, as I suspected, it is made in China, but I did expect that for such a value priced Miele. Okay, we'll uh, switch it on, see how noisy it is. Well, we know how noisy it is by the uh, energy label. But, you know, Chinese made products have got a bad rap because there's an awful lot of rubbish that comes out of China, but sometimes the products are okay just because they're manufactured in China where labour costs are much lower than they would be in Germany. Doesn't mean to say the product's bad. I've got a lot of Apple products, they're made in China, but I've, I've no complaints with the quality and the value I've got from them because they've lasted a long time. Right, we'll switch on. So nothing wrong with that suction at 1200 watts. I'm afraid some of the lower wattage vacuums, the 700 and 900 watt cylinder cleaners, I found them a little bit mediocre as far as suction goes. Nothing wrong with this, but as I said, if you want one of the 1200 watt versions, you'll have to buy them soon because they will start to dwindle in supply. Manufacturers will already be shipping out, I expect. I'm making this video in July. 2017, but manufacturers will already have designed, boxed up, ready to ship. Some will be shipping them out now to stores, the, the machines that meet the newer EU requirements. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend this machine before a demo. If you want a cylinder machine, you've got pets. This is especially good, a cylinder machine is especially good for carpets, uh, sorry, for homes that don't have so many carpets. If you've got mainly hard floors and a few carpets, I think a cylinder is your best option rather than buying an upright cleaner. If you've got mainly carpets, an upright tends to be better for convenience wise and for pickup. So the more carpet you have, the more you need an upright. The less carpet, 
a cylinder. In my opinion and experience is what I would go for. But if you can afford it and if you've got the space, one of each type is the best of both worlds. Or maybe you could have a full-sized main cylinder and a cordless stick cleaner if you want for the quick whipping round. Many people now, it used to be unusual back in the day to have more than one vacuum cleaner, but many households have at least two vacuum cleaners now. One for your main cleaning and one for your daily quick pickups, especially your cordless machines becoming very, very popular. More manufacturers are producing cordless machines. Right, well, I'll have a quick go of it. But like I say, I would buy this. Um, the sort of regular price, though, is around 190. That's the top price I've seen this for. But uh, there's often deals to be had. You might be able to get this for 150. 122 pounds was a very good price for this. But keep your eye on Amazon. They're always varying their prices. They might reduce it again at some point on a, a lightning deal. Okay, I'm just going to give this cleaner a quick go using the regular nozzle. And I'm going to use it on the carpet setting. Sometimes these newer machines with the eco nozzles can be quite hard to push. So, but this is basically one of the basic um, Miele nozzles. It's not strictly an eco one. This nozzle was supplied, or at least the metal base plate version of it was supplied with their higher wattage cleaners back in the day. So even on nearly maximum, you can feel it gripping the carpet and I can feel it lifting up the carpet, but it is not as hard to push. Some vacuum cleaners I've used recently, cylinder vacuums, they are ridiculously difficult to push because the nozzles seal themselves to the carpet. Absolutely useless, but hopefully manufacturers are seeing that. I know Hoover have been, uh, well actually Hoover have been guilty of producing nozzles that just don't do anything with their H lab. But the newer nozzles that Hoover are bringing out with their vacuum cleaners, certainly the ones sold in EU, England and the European community, the UK, they are a lot better. Now, click on this. This will be a lot easier to push, even on maximum. I'd normally use a turbo nozzle on full power, so I'm going to turn it up to full. It will, of course, increase the noise level but this will deal with pet hairs much better. I've got uh, other versions of Miele Cat and Dogs. If you want to check my channel, there's the version that came before this. I can't see the diff any difference being in the performance of the machines. They just vary in the looks and maybe some of the features. But as far as the pickup goes, I think they'll be very similar. So check out my other Miele Cat and Dog vacuum cleaner before I do a demo on this one. Does add to the noise. I'll just show you the rotating brush. It does sound a bit different to be honest, so I'm not sure whether that part I would have thought that part would have just been made in Germany and shipped to China and boxed up with a vacuum, but it is possible, I suppose, that the whole thing even that nozzle. But these nozzles, I believe, aren't made by Miele. Some of their floor heads are made by another German company. Doesn't actually say on it. The model number of this particular turbo head is STB200205. But it also says STB201 Vario. So I don't know which one is correct, but anyway, that's what it is. Okay, I'll just check the automatic cord rewind. That's good. Unlike some models, some of the later models, this doesn't have the comfort system. The Miele Comfort Cord Rewind means you only have to press the button once and it will retract the cable. With this older version, you do have to keep your foot or your hand on the pedal. 
So that's the end of my unboxing and initial first look at the Miele C2 Powerline Cat and Dog Vacuum Cleaner. It is one I would recommend. I'm well versed with Miele vacuum cleaners and apart from unfortunately their robotic vacuum which I tested recently all the other machines are top notch whether you're going for a budget machine or a top of the line Miele they all are very well made vacuum cleaners and produce good results. So pick one up while you can, especially if you can get one at a bargain price. Around £122 is what I paid for it. It certainly is a bargain for such a well-made vacuum cleaner. I will be doing a demo of this machine, but if you want to check out my Miele playlist, you'll see all the other Miele vacuum cleaners that I've demonstrated on my channel in the past. So until the next time, please subscribe. If you have any questions, ask them below. And uh, don't forget to tune in for the next video. See you then. Bye for now.